Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing by Kali Linux. So in this tutorial, we will be learning about port stealing and how it works exactly. So this attack exploits the vulnerability of a switch devices in a LAN. It consists, so it cannot be done uh, on a wide area network because we would be using internet. But if you have already gained access to the network, then you can go ahead and uh, use a remote computer to go ahead and do all of these stuff. So it consists in uh, forcing a switch to update its forwarding table. To that, it will uh, forward the packets sent to the victim on the port to which the attacker is connected. So <laughs> I understand that this might be a bit confusing. So I'll just go ahead and simplify this out. But before I proceed, let me show you some important port numbers and let me tell you how exactly it will work. So uh, I'll just go ahead and type important port numbers first and let me tell you what these things do exactly and how it works. Start and by the time it starts, let me go ahead and open my notepad. I'll show you some important notes and mine it is down I believe. Let me check. Okay, perfect. So these are the important ports, 443 is the most important and most of the time when you go ahead and try to hack into something, you will find all of these are um, except a few like two or three things, uh, two or three uh, port numbers, everything else will be blocked. So this is the network time protocol. Uh, this needs to be active all the time because it gathers uh, network information and the date and day and everything from the internet. After that, we have 443, which is the SSL protocol. And without this, you will not be able to access the internet. So the per person, uh, the person, whoever is managing this, make sure should make sure that the firewall does allow incoming connections, but only restricted uh, incoming connections. And then we have the 500, that's the important one, that is the inter-key exchange IPsec protocol, and which is quite important. So uh, these are the important. So just think that if any of these um, things are compromised, then what may happen? Let's say, for example, if the network time protocol is open and we have this port access. So you can go ahead and um, modify the network changes and trust me guys, any kind of changes to the days and date can go ahead and create a hell lot of difference in the system management and everything of a, for an administrator. And that will not be good. After that, uh, we have the HTTPS 443 port over here. And this is most of the time open and hackers normally go ahead and use this port or the port 80 that is the HTTP because it is not that secure. If the uh, person knows how to go ahead and strip off the SSL, he will use the port 443 because even if uh, the attacker is going ahead and using the port 443 to go ahead and hack into something and any outgoing traffic from that computer, the administrator will uh, most of the time they go ahead and just ignore that part because 443 usually goes through the secured uh, strip line and they won't even be able to know uh, what exactly is going on and they will think that since it is secure, it will be any part of the computer and not the attacker. So let's go ahead and start. Let me check if I could go ahead and run there. Let me check. Okay, so netstat does not work. Or I'll have to run it through administrator, I believe. Perfect. Okay, and so let's let this start. So as you can see, the last numbers are the uh, uh, port numbers as to where exactly it is going. So port numbers work in this way. I have taught this previously, but again, I will go through them. So it works in this way. Like for, let's say, for example, uh, you're ordering something through Amazon or any other website or eBay. Let's say, for example, then uh, they will ask you uh, to go ahead and input your address. So you will put address like something. Let's say, for example, America and you will type California and you will type West Edmonds Road and uh, now West Edmonds Road and give me a random name let's say Cali Hill would be the name of the building and finally uh, the number 45 or 46 whatever the number would be so uh, Cali Hill uh, so what it is exactly is this is the building or the locality where you live this is your house's n number oh, and this is the uh, road and this is the area and everything normally we don't need uh, the exact uh, a city or a country and so this is how it works so how port stealing it work is that this will be isp after that we have the uh, you can say as let's say for example for, uh, let me just go down and create it out the internet where exactly it is and we have the isp internet service providers and then we have the ip address then we have the mac address and finally we have the port number 
and actually we don't need the mac id because it would be the same perfect so uh, california is the internet from where exactly it comes and then we have uh, the west edmund store that is the area that is the isp which area we are exactly the ip address would be uh, the specific area where we reside so ip address can be multiple people can have same ip addresses and you may have heard that uh, no, a person has same ip address but trust me guys multiple people do have the same ip address but they uh, the ending may be different uh, or uh, the isp may be different that's the reason they are uh, uh, to make it more simpler let me tell that one uh, one internet service provider can have cannot have the same ip addresses but multiple uh, internet service providers can have same ip addresses that is the best i can go through so whenever you go ahead and uh, whenever you go ahead and send some data from your computer and when it comes back to you it will first check the internet connection then the isp provider to where it should go that is the road and it's same like the courier facility then it will check the ip address inside the isp that is your area and finally it will go ahead and check the port that is the door that is your only and that cannot be different for any person and only that thing will go through that port so this is how the port stuff works exactly so normally the peop uh, people the administrator won't even go ahead and recognize that you are the one who is actually going and trying to steal something from them so that's how it works and now let me teach you how port stealing works exactly so uh, the attacker can receive the packets and read the contents uh, once it has uh, switched uh, to update its forwarding table and port stealing is a kind of attack where someone steals traffic that is directed to another port of an inter Ethernet switch. So this attack allows someone to receive packets that were originally directed to another computer. It does so by uh, making the switch believe that the attacker's port is a correct destination of the packet. So understand uh, port stealing, you have first to understand the, how Ethernet or the Ethernet switches in particular work. First, there is a MAC address, which is a unique address for each and every computer that is connected to the Ethernet network and that is recorded in network adapter. Ethernet frames have two MAC addresses stamped to it. One is the source address, which identifies the computer that sent the frame, and other one is the destination address, which is the address of the computer to which the frame has to be delivered. In the early days of Ethernet, like in the mid 90s, all frames were sent to everyone using a shared media such as coaxial cables so everyone could listen to all the traffic and this had several problems security being the most important of them ethernet switches improved the situation by segmenting the network in such a way that every computer now has its dedicated port and only the person that wants uh, that specific packet will be directed towards itself and no one else will receive that so an ethernet switch is able to learn who is connecting to a port and it does so by listening to the port traffic. As soon as your company sends an ethernet frame, any frame uh, the switch looks at the source address and records it to uh, an internal table. When it receives a frame that is destined for your computer, it sends the frame only for you. The computer and other ports don't receive the same port and once you understand how it works up to the, this point, the port stealing attack becomes very easy to understand. An attacker is connected to let's say the another port as you can see over here this is the attacker's port and this is the original port and uh, as such he, he will uh, he is blocked from watching your traffic so he won't be able the attacker won't be able to watch you are doing exactly continuing mac address as the source address so he will go ahead and impersonate your computer and the switch gets confused which is actually the uh, the real one the switch usually transmits the frame to the last port which appeared to be the owner of that mac address and if the attacker is sending lot of frames he's going to receive your frame in place so the, uh, let's say for example the uh, mac id let's say for example i'll take a rand i will not even name it a specific mac id uh, to make it more simpler i will just tell that let's say for example the mac id of this computer is a and for this computer is b so what it will go uh, do is that it will go ahead and uh, spoof its mac id to a and then it will go ahead and DDoS this machine that's de denial of service attack to this machine or distributed denial of service attack so that it won't be it will be it will go down and it won't be able to go ahead and connect to this computer the original hub or the switch and later on when the switch sees multiple addresses stating that it will see that there are multiple addresses the MAC address of both but it will not be able to go ahead and it will be confused to which it should send to so it will go ahead and send it to the last used port which is this actually but it will not be able to send that the reason being that the port is already blocked by the DDoS attack so then it will be forced to go ahead and send that a packet to this computer and then he will go ahead and impersonate that computer and he will have all the information 
So the switch usually transmits the frame to the last port which appeared to be the owner of that MAC address. And what happens next on this depends on the attacker's intention. He may receive your packet and keep it for himself but he can also send the packet back a few moments later so you receive it. With a little bit of delay and you have no way to tell that it was compromised. So port shilling rely on the fact that the switch needs to update its address table dynamically because real networks are not completely sta static. For example, if you move your computer from one port to other, you would expect the traffic to be sent to the new port instead of the old one. However, there are some more advanced configuration that you can apply uh, to a switch on in order to make this kind of attack harder to do. These features are typically of um, the more expensive enterprise grade and switches are not found in the less expensive small business equipment typically found it is typically found in the most companies and homes which makes these environment more vulnerable but at the same time this isn't a very useful attack for all small networks because it involves a lot of work to do and to capture a small amount of traffic as well so that's how the port shilling actually works in reality and using it is quite uh, easy rather than just going ahead and knowing how it works so once you know how it works exactly it will be far easier for you to go ahead and implement that so that is it for this tutorial in the next tutorial i'll be teaching you about the most important icmp redirection and finally the traffic tunneling and once you have all the basics right it will be easier for you to understand how the icmp actually works and why it is a very very bad so that's it for this tutorial guys see you in the next tutorial